Right, this was a massive world spanning epic. I'm not going to ruin it for you by telling you what's going on because you might want to play it or you might have played it or you are just playing it right now because this is a reprint. This is not what it originally looked like. Originally it was about the same thickness but the colour wasn't shiny, the pictures weren't as bright, there weren't borders which looked fantastic in this. Um, this is still in print by the way so even despite the fact that this is been what 25 years since it was first published you can still buy it that is a long time in role playing especially considering the ma especially considering the average lifespan of a role playing system is 10 years and after that you've got to get a new edition out or your players are going to lose interest it's kind of what d and is doing now this isn't regarded as the best they've ever done the most famous one that they've ever done is Master Nile Hotel which I don't have with me because I don't have a nice glossy one to show you I've got a rather beat up old one because uh, I'm one of the I'm, I'm quite elitist when it comes to that game because of the two versions that came out one with and one without a Australian chapter basically they re re released the first edition well the first version of National Hotel it was a massive world span epic it's also classed as a bit of a meat grinder as far as the game goes um, several years later it was reprinted with an Australian chapter added to it with the most tenuous of links possible I mean tenuous it would have made for a fantastic standalone adventure the Australian chapter it really would have but they didn't do that but the format here has become incredibly popular and has been used ever since in fact the latest version is Tatters of the King now I will definitely be reviewing that because I can I actually ran it um, and I would like to run it again if I can find another group that doesn't consist of the same people in the last group. Uh, it's a great game. Uh, I picked it initially because it was set in England. And like I said, I'm quite biased. I do like to run a lot of my games in Britain. But, again, off topic. I could say this has spawned many, many uh, variations. Uh, there was a card game out called Mythos, which unfortunately... Despite it being critically acclaimed to have really good and fast mechanics, didn't really get the market appeal and just kind of died out. There is a new version called, I think it's called the Asylum Edition, which is a completely new rule set, completely new set of cards, and that's based in 1920s, whereas the original uh, Mythos was based in 1990s. So people seem to like it more because it's more authentic. Speaking of which, I'm going to talk about the eras. Most common Call of Duty games are set in 1920 because that is the era that Lovecraft wrote his stuff in because he lived in that time. There has been an edition that came out which was Gaslight, which is based in 19, 1890s, and that primarily focused on Britain itself and the fog uh, choked streets of London and the time of Sherlock Holmes and H.G. Wells. And you get the idea. They've also done a modern version as well. Now, Chaos Sigma brought a modern version out called Cthulhu Now, and they have released several adventures for it, uh, the most famous of which is The Stars Are Right. Um, by the way, if you don't know, The Stars Are Right is basically a statement from the original Calls of Cthulhu story that says when the stars are right, Cthulhu rise, and that's the end of humanity. Um, stars Are Right is actually a compilation of adventures, not a massive campaign, but the adventures in it are good, well designed, and they do fit rather well into modern day. Um, a lot of people swear against modern day Cthulhu, I don't have a problem with it. Um, especially considering how popular it has become with, here we go, Delta Green. Now this again is a reprint because I don't have the original. I am not willing to fork out the 50 to 100 pounds, that's like 100 to 200 American dollars, to get my hands on a first edition copy. Because everything that was in that is in here. By the way, you'll notice there's a D20 logo there. There you go. I'll talk about that in a minute. There are really several source books in the past. Um, they did a series called Lovecraft Counter, which basically explored Arkham, which was his um, his invented town and the various, various towns around it. Uh, Innsmouth uh, got got a book, two actually. Uh, Kingsport. And there's another one, and I'm pretty much missing it. Personally, I didn't like these books. Um, I thought they were basically just gazetteers for the towns, and I thought the, the, the setting didn't need that. But they are quite popular. My disapproval of it shouldn't stop you from buying it, because it is fun. They are good books. They are well produced, and they're still in print. Again, 
amazingly so, given their age. Um, like I say, they've also done adventures. I did touch on that previously. Um, they, the, they have just re-released this. Sorry for going out of camera like that. Here we go. Beyond the Mountains of Madness, which follows on from Lovecraft's story at the Mountains of Madness, where you try to find out what happened to the original expedition that went to the Mountains of Madness in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. I believe it's Antarctica. If it's the other pole, I am really sorry. I clearly need to actually read this more carefully. And that's just come out and you can pick that up for a feral whack. If you go on eBay, you can pay over the odds for it. There are easy and cheaper ways which we're going to go into now. Basically, Chaosium are an American-based company, and they're quite small as far as roleplay companies go, despite their huge fan base. They only release, what, two, maybe three roleplaying books a year, if that. So they're dwarfed compared to um, what, what used to be TSR is now, Wizard Coast and White Wolf and companies like that. So they have a system called monographs, which is basically someone inputs... A, an already submitted piece of work which has already been edited and laid out and they publish it and a small percentage of the sales of that goes to the original author and you can order them on the website now if you live in America like most of you will do that's great fantastic because over I think it's $75 they'll give you free delivery don't quote me on that I'm not a representative of Chaosium if you live in England, you have to spend about 150 quid, which works out about $300 for free delivery. Otherwise, you do pay an extortion delivery. Thankfully, VAT, or value added tax for those of you who aren't in the know, doesn't apply to books. So that is something I don't have to worry about. But it does mean if you want to order anything from Chaosium, and considering the monographs are only available on the website, you have to place a big order. So when I got this, I also ordered this, and I ordered this. This is one of seven monographs I picked up, and I will be picking up a lot more because they are coming out quite regularly now. They're very cheap. This cost me about ten pounds, and what is that? So what? Seventy-seven pages, which isn't too bad. This particular one, and Dan Leaders talks about ageless wizards, wizards that live beyond their lifespan, which is which was a popular in some of Lovecraft's stories. There's a lot of different ones come out. The Parapsychologist Handbook is the most famous. Mythos Magic, which is a recent one, reads really well, gives you a lot of ideas. So yeah, if you're gonna get these, you have two choices. You go to Chaosium, you fork 150 quid over, and you get them imported. Um, or you go to eBay, and you pay double the costs for someone that's ordered in a massive amount of them, and is selling one for a profit. Now you see, I did mention touting before in my first video. I don't think that's touting, because what they're doing is they're providing a service to people in the UK and in that general region of the world, because Chaosium don't deal with them. Especially not low quantities. So if I just wanted this on its own, I'd go to eBay. I'd pay over the gods. Yes, I know I would. But I'd get it. If I wanted, say, three or four of them, what I'm more inclined to do is get a lot of mates around and say, right, I'm going to order from Chaosium. Anyone else want anything? Get the order from Chaosium for 50 quid, get the free delivery. And it comes on a plane. Free delivery. It gets here in a week. That's good. As far as international deliveries go. In conclusion, because I suspect I've gone over 10 minutes again, I've got to stop saying that on, on these videos. If I've gone over 10 minutes, by the way, I don't think there's anything I can cut out. So what will happen is this will be part two of one. Well, part two of two and part one of one will come before it. So there you go. In conclusion, Call of Cthulhu was a fantastic game. Um, basically, the general idea is that you are investigators. You are blocks and human beings. You're not superheroes. You're not warriors with swords and spells. Although you can learn spells, but generally speaking, they're more self-defeating than anything else. And your job is basically, if you want to call it that, because it's kind of a volunteer thing, because you kind of stumble across these missions as you go through your daily life, is to stop the evils of the mythos. Um, 